When it comes to spearfishing, diving techniques are everything. You want to be super efficient in the water so you can save your energy and get that bottom time that will enable you to get the fish of your dreams. Now, there are specific techniques that you learn in free diving, so if you haven't taken a course yet, highly recommend you do that. But spearfishing is different than free diving, and there's techniques that we need to know that's a little bit different and not necessarily taught in a free diving course. So Brett Whitman is going to share with you some of his favorite diving techniques so that you can get that personal best fish. Brett, take it away. First is, I'm going to tell you no fish is worth your life. I'm going to say that again and again and again and again, and so you understand it, okay? And the reason why it sounds like, you know, you're being repetitive and all this stuff like that is because I've seen people and know of people that have died over some, like, really stubbornness, I think. I think the same point that drives us to spearfish and drives us to hunt is the same thing that kind of bites us in the butt sometimes. And I, I can speak from my own personal experience, right? No fish is worth your life. So remember that. The whole thing of diving, the whole name of this game is being relaxed, right? And you can't be relaxed if you're having to kick to stay down or kick to stay up. So like I said before in the last video, you should be, after exhaling, you should be right around the eyes of floating positively right around your eyes, right? You should be floating after you've exhaled a little bit. Now, you've done that, right? Now, if you exhale all the way, you should be sinking slightly, okay? That's to kind of simulate an actual dive, right? And when you come up, like I said before, if you black out, you're going to let a little bit out, but at least you'll still be mostly positive, all right? That way you can relax when you're doing your breathing technique, which leads me into breathing, all right? I've taken a few dive courses, um, you know, and, and one of the things they always drive home in the free diving courses that I've taken is not hyperventilating, right? That was an old myth. Hyperventilating basically is blowing off all your CO2. When you blow out, you lower your level of CO2, which does allow you to hold your breath longer by getting rid of your urge to breathe that as your CO2 rises, the urge to breathe kind of triggers you uh, into naturally wanting to breathe. So you're suppressing that, right? But what happens is I'm not going to get all into it because there's people that are way better, like at Ted Hardy, about explaining CO2, uh, or excuse me, hyperventilating. Okay. And so I'm going to have him as a resource down below so you can go and use that and find out all the different reasons why. But there's molecules that are tighter bond and all this stuff like that. But I am not a free diving instructor. I've just taken a few courses and I know hyperventilating is bad. And I know how you do that is because you exhale exclusive, like, you exhale these huge amounts of uh, CO2 and that it does make you feel more comfortable when you're diving. However, it provides less oxygen in the long run and then you black out without any warning. So what I'm saying now is what I've seen a lot of people talk about now is called tidal breathing. And so your breathe up is really two minutes of you sitting there relaxing. If you have a float, you can hold on to your float even. And just totally relax and go on a mental checklist of shutting down any tension or releasing any tension in your toes, to your feet, to your ankles, to your calves, all the way up to your whole body like that, right? Your butt, seriously, your back, anywhere where there's tension, just relax, right? It literally two minutes is going to feel like an eternity when you're doing it, but it will make every dive so much better. And if you have that ability to do that, right? If sometimes I understand you see a fish, you just got to go. I get it. Diving is not free diving. However, try to free dive as much as possible and using good technique, good form and all of that stuff uh, to make your spear fishing much more productive. So when you're shutting down everything, you're just relaxing, you're breathing there. Breathe nice when you're sleeping. Not necessarily super deep and all this stuff. Just nice and relax. In and out, in and out, right? And I say just you're, you're going through this mental checklist, right? You're just breathing in and out, right? The name of the game really for this whole thing is to stay calm, right? Lower your heart rate, just relax. Go into like almost like a sleep state, right? That's when you know you're good to go. Don't be all fired up thinking about your dive, okay? So when you're breathing, you're doing your tidal breathing, you're good to go, right? For your last breath, Take in a huge breath if you can. Fall through belly breathing. We bre belly breathe, meaning we push our belly out. We breathe through our belly, not our chest, right? Belly breathing. In order to have your belly breathing or not, you should be able to go 
and your chest should stay relatively smooth, relatively flat, and your stomach will be going in and out. That's when you know your diaphragm is working, okay? So your belly breathing, take a big deep breath, right? And as you go to dive down, right, you're trying to stay streamlined, but this portion is about breathing before and after. So we'll get into all that stuff later. And again, I'm not a free dive instructor. I have taken courses, not a free dive instructor, nor do I pretend to be. There's people way better at that. So take your big deep breath, fill your lungs, everything with air, and you dive down, right? I'm going to tell you right now, when you dive down, you're going to want to move slower than you think. Go completely, even if you've got to go far, just do nice kicks, relax, keep your chin tucked, stay vertical if you're going deep, right? Sometimes we just drop mid-water column and we got to look around and all that. That's great. But really, just stay relaxed, okay? Now, fast forwarding and get back to the surface, right? Especially with a long breath hold. There's a, a technique called hook breathing, okay? And the reasoning behind this hook breathing is to basically maintain the level of air, of oxygen in your lungs while taking in more air, right? So it's you're not necessarily blowing out, right? Because the, the idea behind this, uh, uh, the idea behind this is you've held your breath for so long, right? Whatever remaining of oxygen in your lungs you have, it's in there. But at that is why you're using up a lot of it. So when you hit the surface and you blow out, now there's nothing available in there. So that's when they see blackouts occur. That was my blackout, okay? Blackouts occur. So rather than blow out, you suck back in, right? You're keeping that pressure positive in your lungs and, you, and you're taking in new air. And that's supposed to help significantly reduce that likelihood of blacking out. It's called hook breathing. So the, that's the little breathing part that I'm talking about, okay? Um, again, if you guys want more information on all of that, there's resources uh, part where you can click on there. And I think it'll, it will direct you over to uh, Ed Hardy is actually version free diving stuff because he's got a ton of great stuff on there. Now that we talked about diving, breathing, we got to talk about buddy. Now I've done podcasts, hour long podcasts on this, how to buddy, you know, what a buddy is, buddy system. And we, what we do is we do a one up, one down system. A buddy is someone that kind of shadows you um, either, you know, next to you or whatever. I like to be like, this way or, or whatever way it is. If you're going to be like this, just make sure you have muzzle awareness, I call it, and, you're, and you're, you're, your spear gun is pointed down, not at your buddy. You should never ever point your gun loaded or unloaded um, at your friend. So buddy breathing, right? So that conversation that I go back to where I talk about like I'm buddy diving, sorry, where let's say hey, I'm diving with uh, John and John holds his breath for a minute and 15 seconds. Hey, okay, so that's what we're doing. What depth do you feel comfortable at diving at? Feel comfortable diving at 60 feet. Cool, so you feel comfortable diving at 60 feet. Well, I feel comfortable diving at 80 feet. Well, it doesn't matter because 60 feet is where we're going to be limited to because that's where John is limited to, right? If I black out, he's got to go come and get me, right? So, we stayed at 60 feet. And I also know that, hey, he's doing, you know, a minute and a half or, or a minute and 15 second dives. So I know when, how to keep an eye on him. And I know to be there when he returns to the surface, he drops down. I stay here and I just kind of watch. He probably here in California would disappear. And knowing that as a good buddy, um, I start watching my watch when he dives down. And I know when he should be coming back to the surface. Now, if he is like down there for two minutes, there's a problem, right? So what I do is I'll drop down, depending on, I'll drop down at around a minute and 10 seconds or whatever it is, expecting to see him and kind of follow him up together and follow him up, make sure he's good to go when he hits the surface. And then we'll have a conversation usually, hey, what did you see? Did you see any fish? And that's why buddy diving, I think, is such an effective tool because oftentimes you will see a fish on your way up or they'll come in. You just can't stay down. So he's like, hey, on the rock, sit there, just sit tight. There's a big sheep's head down there. You make sure you do this or that and go down and just check. Copy that. And I go down and do that. But a good buddy should be mirroring you the entire time. Ideally, if we're hunting pelagics, right, 
like, um, let's say a big tuna or, or whatever the rule is. Sometimes I, it's very, very nice to have three guys in the water, three guys, one guy diving, one guy recovering, and then the other guy who's actually spotting the guy who's diving, right? And I say recovering because let me, let me talk about this again. When you recover, say John does a minute and a half dive, he should be on the surface for at least three times that dive, right? So he's recovering. And then I'll dive down, right? So you have three, at least someone's recovering and somebody's spotting the whole time. There's not a, a lack in time where it's, you just kind of have to sit out and chill until he's ready to watch you, right? So that's what we work on with a buddy, well, with three guys buddy diving. It's usually pretty awesome. Now, later on, we're going to get into murk diving and murk, murk of poor visibility, murky waters. That gets really tricky. And there's variations to the buddy thing that we do but you can still do it. And that's the point, right? So, so we've talked about now, right? Spotting your buddy, right? So we've covered that. Now, what happens if your buddy comes up and he blacks out? Do you even know the signs of a blackout? Do you know what to do in case of a blackout? So basically what happens is blackouts usually occur within 30 feet of the surface. As a matter of fact, Oftentimes they occur after you get to the surface and you take a couple of breaths and the guy passes out. That goes back to what I was talking about before where you get to the surface and you let out air and now you go to take a breath and it's too late. Your body can't sustain itself. So, so it goes to shut down. Well, what you should look forward to, I don't necessarily look forward to, what you should look forward to is that when they're coming up, Watch their, their skills. There's something called an LMC. It's a loss of motor control. That's usually the first sign of a blackout where all of a sudden, like, they'll be like shaking kind of shit or everything will just go extremely slow and not make sense. Almost like basically on autopilot. Look for bubbles to come out. They lose track on their bubbles and then they start to sink back down. They've now blacked out, right? That's when you got to dive down. And you should be spotting them anyways. You're paying attention. So guide them, right? Making sure that, look, you want that snorkel out of their mouth. When they dive down, the snorkel should be out of your mouth anyways when you dive down because it's a direct pathway to your lungs, right? So close it, close the chin, right? Put your arm underneath their, drop their weight belt. They've blacked out. You can buy a new weight belt. Drop the weight belt, get them to the surface. And then we tap below right? We remove the mask. We tap them and we blow and we talk to them. And we say, come on, buddy, breathe, breathe, breathe. Put them on their back. They should be floating nice and buoyant, right? And you just trying to trigger them to come through and breathe, right? So that's literally in a nutshell, the easiest thing to do, you know, what to do when someone blacks out. Be there, number one, right? But number two, like knowing if it's coming or not, knowing like, hey, you're all right? Because Oftentimes you've blacked out. I've done it before, even fighting, um, you know, uh, through sports, uh, you get knocked out or whatever it is. You don't even realize what happened. You just come through. That's when your buddy is crucial to watch you and take care of you. So know the signs of a blackout, know how to treat a blackout and then practice. Nothing wrong with it. Go practice. Okay. Know why people blackout, right? What it is how to treat it, right? And then we can move on. So we're not going to a funeral instead of going diving. Do you understand? I hope that helps clear that up. And again, I refer you, go take a free dive, free diving course where they can just saturate you with a lot of that information and kind of drive it home even more. You can go practice rescuing. The biggest thing is when you're diving, keep the snorkel out of your mouth so that if you do black out, you have bubbles and not a direct pathway into your lungs keep the mouth closed, bring them up, tap bro, a blow, and talk to them, tell them to breathe. Well, I hope you found that information helpful. If you have any questions, just let me know in the comments and I'll get back to you. Now, if you're interested, the next video in the series is right here.